possession crucial from this. How much longer will the referee allow? Dublin lead by a point. And there's the whistle. It's over. It's over. We earned it by winning the last two matches on the road, and that's not going to be taken away from us. But what I love in Hurland, I love players that will never give in. He hits it. He hits it. Right. It's over the bar. Hello, welcome to the RTGA podcast. I hope you're all doing well on this miserable Wednesday. Recording on a Wednesday because poor Rory has to go to the dentist tomorrow. You all right, Rory? Cam, no. Going up to see my buddy Dan McCartan, so can't wait for that. Uh, <laughs> pity for him, Dalo, huh? Pity yeah, for him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you will visit, I'd say, as well. It's, there's, a few, there's a few bits and pieces that are about to get painful, <laughs> start, but you know what I mean? Start, you yeah. don't go until it gets painful. You get the salt water first, Dalo. Yeah. And, uh, drop a brandy, just, drop a brandy, yeah, Rory. Exactly. Yeah. Clove oil, you know, go yeah. to all the extremes and then get to the dentist. Uh, so this week's RTE uh, Dentist Podcast is brought to you by... Um, We'll have Pat Spillane on later to talk about the uh, football finals, but it's obviously Anthony Daly here with me and Rory O'Neill to look ahead to the, the Hurling final. Uh, predominantly 1A, but we'll also have a double. If you put on the final. next quiz with me and Pat, Mikey, and yeah. the questions are kind of evenly <laughs> divided. The quiz, yeah, that was great. D- dentistry quiz. That'll be fair. <laughs> Equally unfair to both. Um, so we'll have a look at the Division 2A final briefly in a little while, but it's um, it's it's an all monster clash. Um. I think any any questions about any of the whinging from us Leinster folk about Munster superiority are, uh, are are well and truly put back in their box now for a little while. And as Rory said on Monday, I picked a good day to take off to miss out on the uh, on uh, discussing Wexford's uh, defeat to Waterford. Well, Dalo, I think we were all very lucky that TV producer Rory O'Neill couldn't manage to put out a video version of the podcast because the shit-eating grins on himself, Mick Foley and Donald O'Cusick's Cusick's faces would have been too much to handle, uh, I think. It- uh, <laughs> I suppose there's a bit of cockiness beginning to creep into the air, all right, Mike. Oh, oh, a little bit between that and their footballers' majestic yeah. wind down in Tullamore. It was very uh, funny, it's actually. The park or nowhere now, as well as this. Yeah, yeah, it was not very funny. Eve, obviously. It, it was very funny, actually. I obviously had to cut it out. I might send John the clip, Mikey, just because I didn't have to edit it out. But um, when 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 Don Log arrived, he said, Oh, Jesus, triple corkage. He says, Do you know what now? We should just go cock all the way. <laughs> I said, do you, want, do you want to get me in more trouble, Don Logan? <laughs> but anyway, Dana, we might as well start with them. They were very impressive. Um, you know, they came from behind against Kilkenny. And what was a fantastic game. I had I had a very busy weekend, so I didn't I didn't get to watch everything from start to finish, but I did I manage to sit down and watch three quarters of that game and it was thoroughly enjoyable. And Cork looked very good, and it's 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 very noticeable, Dalo, um, with the match very much in the balance. They were able to take off Shane Kingston and Patrick Horgan and freshen up their forward line and still get the business done. Yeah, and that's the beauty, I suppose. There's a lot of talk, uh, Mike, about the Waterford depth and uh, how will he pick 26 for the championship if all are fit. And, but, I mean, when you can pop in Tim O'Mahony, who's definitely going to start in yeah. the championship, you pop in Jimmy Harnady, you can pop in Jack O'Connor and, and Conor Callan, you know, so... You, you have options, and um, that's the one thing with Cork. They've been developing uh, the likes of Joyce. Darrell Leary didn't maybe have his greatest day, but that's learning curve for a 19-year-old. That will happen along the way. It's not, not going to go all uh, that way, you know. So Ma- Massey Keown is a particular kind of challenge right. as well, isn't yeah. he? Yeah, different than maybe you know, mm. what you're expecting to be inside at full forward. Massey probably be you will be looking like him at a corner or a wingman, but you know, lethal and, and head down and goes for goal. And Kilkenny brought all that we probably knew that they'd bring Mike. Um, they just don't do no shows in league semi-finals and they brought the kitchen sink in lots of ways. And we all know that, that TJ Reid uh, men to come back into play as well. So, um, yeah, it was a lot to admire from Cork, especially for me that they kind of drew level, I think, around the 44th minute uh, with Manny's point, and then it looked like you'd say Cork, you know, are going to kick on now at home, massive home crowd. And Tuska Kenny hit the next patch where they took over, and yet for Cork, Fitzgibbon was huge, you know. Um, down the stretch, I thought he he really he really took over things. Alan Connolly, huge performance, and Connolly Han is probably one of the stories of the league. I mean, this time last year, we didn't see any hope that Connolly Han would be playing in the league final, so. Yeah, it's a lot going well for keeping these men. Um, they look a happy camp and, uh, you know, it looks like an intriguing battle at the weekend. And one, I think, I don't think Mikey Wexford showed up. I don't know what the thinking was. I was very, very disappointed. Um, just the attitude was off. And if the attitude is off against 
a Cork or Kilkenny award for the you know the top what a seven eight you'll be beaten and and you'll be beaten well by this Waterford squad at the moment. Yeah, yeah, uh, it's it's all smoke and mirrors. It's all it is. It, yeah, it's 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 rope it up, you know. We, yeah, we, like Daryl, be a hundred percent proven correct if he if he sends Galway out of Wexford Park packing with two points on the bag. Yeah. So, but for me, I don't know what you gain from that kind of a a no show. I, I find it hard to figure. Jarl yeah. Nam was a bit of a man for that as well, now. But the thing with Jarl Nam, he probably didn't start doing it until we'd at least won all Ireland bagged. Yeah. You know, so. Me, they have a much tougher different. start as well, though, Dale, or like Wexford. I think it's, is it, is it Galway at home, Dublin away in their first two yeah, matches? Yeah. You know, so like that's, that's difficult because by the well, time. Dublin are at home. They have two games at home to begin with. I still you, think so Dublin does nothing to be gained. Yeah. You know, you, you, we all saw, okay, got a couple of minutes into the chin, but we all saw Conor McDonald hobbling off. Mm. And we don't know what the extent of that is. So I, if you go and play it, go and play it, I think. And if you're beaten, you're beaten. You worry about the final then if you have to worry mm. about the final. But I don't get that conceding 520 doing yourself any good. Though they, had, they were the only team to win every game in the league up to that. So they've probably taken an awful lot of positives from the league. But yeah, it was a just it was a brilliant game Saturday night. I really, really enjoyed it. I watched it alongside a Sunday game, Pundit. Looked very fresh on Sunday night, Shane Dowling. Um, and we, you know, it's good, good. You could tell <laughs> every one of the, the Piercy boys was loving it. Like they were, they were locked on. You know, there was no distractions with music or, or jukeboxes playing or anything like that. It was National League semi final and a cracker from the park. So, good sign of it when those lads are completely locked on. Another great hurling men. You had the you had the boys down for a, a, a team building session, was it? Bit of bonding, bit of bonding, Michael. Bit of bonding. Marty Brown, Marty Brown's for the bonding. Please. Did they play a match? Did they play a match down there? Did no, they, they just had their first outdoor training session, Rory. I think the Limerick boys are so confident, Rory, they're going to be in the All Ireland final. The Limerick Championship's not penciled in until sometime in August, where the Clare one is penciled in for July. So we we've a good few outdoor and two rounds of the league played as well, and playing our third on, on Saturday. And um, you know what, though, from a Limerick perspective, I know we're digressing here, but you know what, like given the weather the way it was there for the first couple of months, maybe there's a bit of there's good method behind that from a Limerick perspective, too. You know, oh, yeah, they trained, they had a good training session and they, they have their own clubhouse, of course, um, in in Piercy with their own bar and everything. So, there's a bit of food there, go to me, watch the game. I'm going back to Bearfield, Shane, I think, trained the uh, Dora Bearfield, St. Joseph's Dora Bearfield last mm-hmm. year. He's gone back playing. Yeah, and there's we, a chance that he might be able to play again, which is yeah. fantastic for him. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Talking to the manager here in Birmingham, he said he trained very well on Saturday in Aurora. So things are looking up. They buy oh. the Dow. Go buy the Dow. Jeez, mate. My captain, he might have to write his column about his return to Junior B Hurland then, I think. That, oh, that, this that, is senior. He's going for senior. He's not going back for Junior B, Mike. He's going back to play senior. You won't meet him in the in the All Ireland Club semi final Junior B, Mike. <laughs> you could sing that if you had an air to it, Dana. Um, <laughs> anyway, we we have digressed. Um, let's uh, let's get back on track here a little bit, R- Rory. Um, I won't ask you to talk about Cork too much. I think we had well, quite enough of that on Monday. Yeah, we did. Uh, um, Waterford. It's hard to get away from. You, you have to mention him because he's he's our top scorer from play. He could he could possibly be the top scorer in the championship from or in the league from play. Austin Deason is three twelve from play out of three twenty two. He scored. He's a huge loss. He's he's regained, you know, whatever. No, I don't think he can say he'd ever lost it. But you know, he's 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 backfiring. He seems physically in tip top shape. Um, they seem to have found a role for him that suits him. Unfortunately, the other Austin Gleason traits, which are perhaps having a little running a little bit hot at times, came back as well because whatever Simon Donahue said to him, and I'm sure there was some provocation, you know, or maybe there wasn't Simon if there wasn't, but what he did was stupid. Thankfully, Watford have taken their medicine, but now they're missing their most informed forward for a national final. And you mentioned uh, as well, he did lose a bit of form uh, for a bit. Um, I think if there's any consolation that you could, you know, and it is great to see him back now firing in all cylinders. If there's any consolation, I suppose, for Liam Cahill, is that it has happened now and not in a, a monster round robin game or an all Ireland quarter final semi final where he's then going to then not only put them down to 14 but also then miss whatever subsequent game should they progress beyond that. So that might be some solace in that. Now, look, you'd wonder at the same time is this a conversation that Liam Cahill has had with Austin before, you know, and is and have previous managers had the same conversation like just like. 
you're a mature player now. Like, just cut it out. Like, everything. Like, Austin Gleeson is one of those players that I personally will gladly pay to go in and watch play hurling any day of the week. He is a mercurial talent. He's just, he's kind of a street hurler. Like, there's something sort of off the cuff. There's something unpredictable about him. He kind of plays in a way that, you know, you'd, you'd, you'd want, if you were coaching young lads, you'd say, watch, watch Austin Gleeson. Like, look, look at the way he, like, there's a kind of a, an, a sort of an abandonment and a joy about the kind of style that he plays. But like that part of his game, he's just got to cut it out because, you know, he's not a child anymore. Like he's, he's around now, uh, maybe seven, eight years on uh, as a senior inter-county player. And, it's just it's unhelpful and you could even see by Liam Cahill's reaction as well the last day like it was just a sense of re a real sense of disappointment he probably felt like I mean it was a real case of seriously like what are you doing you know and um Rory are we going to have this case now with the manager it's, going like this on, on the sideline anymore? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I think it's disappointing as well for the spectacle because, you know, like he's been kind of playing that midfield role. I mean, like if you were, like if we were looking forward to Dara Fitzgibbon versus Austin Gleeson, I mean, what a, what a, what a, what a treat that might be on a Saturday night. Like, I mean, so I think it's detracted a little bit from the spectacle that it might be. And um, it's a real pity. But look, just to go back to the very beginning of our podcast series when we were previewing it, I went for Wadford. I felt that it's kind of, as we said, it's year three now for Liam Cahill. He's built a really strong panel. They're in an unbelievable physical shape. They have been to the near enough to mountaintop on a few different occasions, whether it's Munster finals, All-Ireland finals. I think a league final might be a big boost to them. Um, and just in terms of that little bit of confidence that they'll get from it to kind of push on into the championship. But I, there's, they have so much depth. Like in years gone past, you might say an Austin Gleeson figure missing for a Waterford would be a mortal blow. To my mind, they have so much depth. Now, Austin should probably be worried. Will he get his place back? You know, like they, they, like they will have ready-made replacements and. Maybe not to the same quality, but like just they, they just to me they look like they're humming and hmm. they're they're very much in sync with management, game plan, strategy, fitness, conditioning. They obviously have the hurling. And I fancy them big time Saturday night. Yeah, um, <laughs> Dalo just uh, on the <laughs> Dalo laughing. <laughs> I do though, yeah. genuinely Dalo. You I rattled do. for centuries, never mind decades. <laughs> <laughs> um, just, uh, just on the kind of the temperament thing, Dalo. I, I would imagine you played with, <laughs> we know you played with, and you managed a few players who, who possibly, you know, kind of, you know, ran red in football. It's less the individual flashpoints we have, kind of what we had in Armagh and Donegal. It's inter in hurling. It does tend to be the kind of the individual kind of these flare-ups and they're never prolonged. It's a moment of madness because I suppose you have a weapon in your hand, so to speak. Um, and not saying there's no, so, there's no so to speak about it. Yeah. It's the back of that head, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's clearly, it's something that's in some people. And I would imagine from a coaching management point of view, it can be quite hard to get out because you might want to question, well, do I want to get it out of them altogether? That mightn't be good either. Yeah. They used to say that about a lot of glads. If, if you took it away from him, would he be the same man and that lose, kind of thing? Yeah. But like, look, the score is 5, 20 to 16 points. No matter what Simon, Simon gives a little tap, I think, on maybe his calf as the mm. ball is going out wide. And, mm. you know, maybe there's a verbal or two. I don't know. But you're, if there's a verbal, just give back a verbal. Just say, take a look at the scoreboard there, Simon. Point at the scoreboard, and, yeah. And uh, I've fair, I've two whatever got out of that, like two, three from players, you know. <laughs> and and I, like, I think... I think you look at, you say, a similar Rory spoke about him, like to watch him. I love watching him. I love him love as a player, right? the yeah. transfer market. I mean, you could try and squeeze that bit of um, that devilment or whatever you want to call it, petulance or whatever you want to call it, out mm. of him. I mean, him, himself and Tony Kelly be the two I'd, I'd love to watch more. Maybe Keen Lynch, obviously, as well, um, at the moment. Yeah, I suppose you could look at showing, you can join the Hoggies and the Dara Fitz. But, but Gleason is a Rolls Royce, like, and, you know, just. You'd never see Tony Kelly getting involved in that. Like he'll just walk away 
have a smirk, say we're beating you by what? Alter boy. You know, 19 Alter points. Boy. Yeah, well he but Tony well able to look after himself <laughs> as well, you know. So yeah, yeah. Yeah, I did have a few lads like that over the years, and you just have to keep on the case, I think. And and um I suppose no better learning day now for Austin on Saturday night when he's sitting up in the stand in Turles, hmm. watching the lads run out in a national final. And he's playing some hurling. I don't think, Rory, you'd have got to Dara Fitzgibbon Austin Gleeson clash because he's no way he's operating at midfield. It seems to be this free roll down the left side of attack. And it's so... Wexford had no handle on it at all. And a lot of teams, I think, will struggle because it's very hard to time down. He was targeting the short puck outs as well. Um, and his link-up with Desi Hutchinson, for me, was just something to behold. And... Uh, Look, I, I, I think nearly the opposite to you, to you, Rory, that I think it could be. They have a good panel. I mean, everything tied back at centre-back. Jack Fagan switched to the half-back line. Big success. And he um, signed a Conor Prunty, Jamie Barron? Yeah, well, the talk is Prunty might be available, but to be fair to, to double down on your depth, Irla Daly has done some job at full-back. Yeah. Um, again, Jamie Barron, Dara Lyons has played some stuff in the middle of the field. They have a lot, but I just think the loss of Alexa Gleeson is... Is very hard to quantify, and I I think it maybe sways it for me in my head that Cork m- might have the the edge. I think that look, Mikey, big thing as well about it is they don't meet for six more weeks, fifteenth mm. of May down in Waterford, which could be a massive, massive day for both teams. Um, so you can probably there'll be a lot of water will flow under the bridge before they meet again. So they will want. I think Kieran and Liam as well will want that national title. Mm. And they're both in Kieran is in his second term. Uh, Liam is in third year. I think they're both as a manager. Look, I've been there. You want, you want to get something won, you know. And a league title now for not, for either is nothing to be a league title and get get in the tree in Munster would be a savage early season target. And you can take the rest of it in on its merits and, and go for everything. Dalo mentioned Dalo mentioned Kieran and and Kieran Kingston and Liam Cahill. If um, I was the TG Carr director, now I'd be scanning the crowd very vivaciously on Saturday night because I wouldn't be surprised to see a whole host of inter-county managers all sat up in the stands watching this one very intently because I think Delo is correct. I think the two teams will go for it. I think there'll be no shadow box in here. I think they'll put out pretty much their strongest teams. There might be one or two that you try, you know, and say, look, Let's see how he goes. This we we'll know for certain. I think full back is an area that Cork will maybe try again and just see if he if he can settle into it. Yeah, I think um, Rory, you can't like it'd be tough now just to drop him. He was doing so well, like wouldn't it? Yeah, he got a roast in though. Like in fairness, no look. No, there was a hint of an injury first, too, wasn't there? Was there? Okay, fair enough. I yeah. didn't know that. But um, well, if it's yeah. not Daryl Leary, who is it, Roy? Well, you, like I mean, look, you, 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 like Damien Cahillan is still there. Um, you know, I, I think he's probably an underrated hurler. Uh, would probably be maybe a step. You're kind of going in the wrong direction now. Damien has kind of switched out into the corner. He's kind of moved out onto the wing. Cork are kind of playing slightly more fluid. I don't think Sean O'Donoghue who was a full back. So that's that's there. There your options. You don't or have. Melrick. Or Mellorick. Well, Mellorick, no, he seems to be doing a really good role mm. in and around that middle third in terms of picking up. Like he's, he's actually actually going back to your original point there, Delo, and you're probably correct. Had Gleason been playing, it's Mellorick that probably would have picked so. him up, you know. Would have um, looked Keen Lynch in two weeks' time, like as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. So so that's 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 it. But um, yeah, I think like I'd have no problem with them throwing Daryl Leary in there again. The big issue is I think they just need to give him a little bit more protection. Like if he's going to be in there either on Stephen Bennett or um, Desi Hutchinson one on one, you know, I'd be a little bit nervous of that. I think if he's in there and you have somebody just sat in front, and that can't be Mark Coleman because he doesn't really do that kind of role. I think you you know you you don't want to leave him too exposed while he's still learning his trade. You could have Joyce back in midfield, Rory coming back playing that guy, picking up Coleman's man, Coleman in the pocket. You know, uh, you could have that. That that seemed to work against Clare now very much in the first round of the league. Every time, every time Coleman went wandering as is he's want and as as what he's brilliant at as well. Uh, you, I was watching back. Who's 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 in the hole? And it was Kieran Joyce again. Another very young Clare having an outstanding season, and he can play that role as well. So yeah. they have options there. They have at options the, there. You could be looking at at Watford team. I think. 
I don't think I think Prunty might have a chance. Do you start Caleb Lines? He came on for a few minutes. I don't know. Did the half back line have been solid and, and settled? Stephen Bennett won't play, is what I hear. And Jamie Barron won't play, is what I hear. He might be in the 26. Right. So you'd be, you'd be looking at him, but as we've spoken about, they're still very strong. Very strong. Mm. Still very strong. You, you're going to have Mike Kiley full forward if you don't have Stephen Bennett, who brings a different sort of. Oh, way. he's a handful. Yeah. 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 yeah, he's very much hand for at the other end of the field. Then just think like Shane Kingston, Rory, he only had a point the other night against Kilkenny. Um, he doesn't often, you know, kind of have two such low tallies as that in a row. So, um, other than that, like Alan Connolly had four points, Hoggy had nine, albeit eight were from freeze. Um, you know, there's definitely a shape there on their full forward line. Um, that I think appeals to the core curling fan, shall we say? Yeah, it does. And I think Alan Cadigan isn't too far away either. I think he had a bit of a setback recently there I think was it a calf injury or something like that Dale I'm yeah, not entirely yeah. sure so he's he's um he, he gives a, another option again with that pace you know whether Lehan starts or comes in I mean look I think as a front six and Cork kind of still kind of play largely a traditional front six I think Cork are as strong as any team out there you know I think they're uh, for, as a front eight actually from eight right up to 15, I think that that won't be Cork's problem on Saturday night. It's what goes in the other end really is going to be the issue. And that's kind of been the issue for a while now, you know. If it's a shootout, which it could be, um, the only issue, as, as we know, the weather is meant to get a lot cooler. It is meant to potentially, there is the potential for rain and pretty cold. So we're kind of back to sort of wintry conditions, which would suggest much lower scoring tallies. And I think if it gets into a bit of an arm wrestle, I just think Waterford are probably better set fair for that. And that's why it's slightly favoured him. And you, you are fancy in Cork, Dela? I think I do. I, I, I still think, Rory, even if it, it is getting colder, even this evening, you could you could even feel it this morning. And, um, but Turles is going to be in great shape, I'd say. Mm. You know, and like there'll be a big young. Cork crowd. Like they'll have, they'll, yeah. have by, they'll have the vast majority of the sport. If there's 20,000 there, there'll be 15,000 from Cork, you know? Yeah, and if you, you can win a semi-final against Kilkenny with, with Kingston and Hoggy really not firing from play, uh, you know, I, I'd fancy Cork. I think there's, you know, those two will be due. I like Shane Barrett at 11 with the option then of Spring and Harnedy. Do you know, I like the way that's, that dynamic is working uh, for Kieran. Um very impressed with Alan Connolly as well. The last also time. like stepping up, saying I don't want to be an impact sub here. I mm. want to play, and that's what you want. And there's some competition. Look at everyone is raving about the strength in, in Waterford squad. A serious, serious depth in the Cork squad as well. And I think Cork might edge a great game. But um, as TJ Ryan would say, it's like the deaf dog. It's hard to call. It's <laughs> <laughs> a great one, that. Um, it does. I have seem, to give him the credit. I should have said it's a dinger. Uh, seems Division Two A was hard to call too, lads. Just a quick mention on it because after after Kerry famously did a number on Tip uh, in the Munster, let's not call it the league. Let's call it the cup. Um, you know there was a lot of talk that they were shoe ins, and I mentioned it here a couple of weeks ago. The down were going well, and I can't remember who was on with us. Said, "I know Kerry are going to come good. Kerry are going to come good," and they didn't. So we have perhaps the unexpected uh, final day low of down v Westmead down kind of won the league Westmead to get through as the semi final winners. Um, it's I'm interested what you think. It, what's more important, do you think, for a county that's developing? And Don Logue spoke quite passionately about this on Monday about how the GA are failing. You know the the non traditional hurling counties. Is it more important to be in Division One A or to get your your year in the sun in the Leinster Championship because? You get marginally more games in Division One, um, but then the the championship is the championship. I, I wonder how you'd view the two. Yeah, I think the league um, is is tough the way it is now with the kind of leveling out of maybe the Leash Antrim game was huge in in One B, and then we've probably felt in One A. I think it was or it could be One A One B now, but they're evenly divided. That awfully we're going to be the bottom team, and that's the way it penned and. Yeah, I think we need to look at going back to maybe the the six team one mm. A and one B being being maybe having two traditionally very strong teams, maybe three ish and three, you know, who have a good yeah. chance of getting up, finding their feet, testing themselves against the big teams, and yet we'll have two, three games maybe against similar standard for the time being. But look, I don't think it's doing say, anybody much because it's not doing the strong teams a lot of good, really. The yeah. fans aren't being well served, and as you say. The yo-yo teams are just getting battered and going back down again. 
Yeah, no, delighted, I suppose, in one way. Sorry for Offaly. We all want Offaly back, but delighted that Antrim because they were so competitive, Mike, right mm. through the league. You know, I mean, took Waterford. It took Neil McManus to put a penalty over the bar for them not to draw with Waterford up there. And we're raving here about Waterford. So beat Clare up there last year, drew, drew with Wexford up there last year. So, you know, they went down to Nolan Park and I think Kilkenny beat them by four. I think they just chucked away the... the the tip game with a view to being ready for Offaly. So, now look, a great story for the year is down, how well they're going under Conor Sheehan. And Derry are going really well in the next division down as well. So, the Ulster hurling on a bit of a high. It's a great area there, the Arts Peninsula, you know, with Belly Cran and Belly Galgate, Portaferry, all playing the Antrim Senior League as well. And, you know, they're, they're close enough to Belfast, I suppose, there. But they, they played at a good club level there and that feeding in and some very good players. And I think you just look at the two Kerry games, uh, Westmead beating Kerry in the semi-final and down beating them in the game to qualify for the final. There's a fair line of form there. I looked at the Kerry team on both days, are very similar. Um, and the matches actually were quite similar. And down came from six points down in the last two games against Kildare and against um, Kerry. So it's just, I suppose you'd, you would feel that Westmead, having played in the Joe McDonough final in Croker, Mike, um, played in the Leinster Championship last year. Fellas like Joe Fortune, very good manager up here with uh, up in Dublin with Belly Bowden and great Dublin under 21 minor manager. You know, to be able to bring on Davy Glennon from Galway as a sub after 30 minutes, to still have Killian Dial and Niall Mitchell, you know, shooting the lights out, and, and Tommy Dial, one of the best centre backs. Like if the Railway Cup was still going, Mikey, uh, the jobber Dial would be on, <laughs> he'd be on the Leinster team every year. So I just think you have to look at their big day experience and it's on in Turles. It's fantastic for the down lads, do you know, to get to Turles, a uh, big occasion and, and their, their fans will travel, might have the same following as their footballers. But they're, they're on a chance now going up to Division 1. Their footballers have been relegated out of Division 2. You know, that's it. Like, now it's different areas of the county, obviously. That's, that's what I mentioned yeah. about the peninsula. And, but it is, it's, it's a great occasion. I'd say they're licking licking their lips up and down to get down and into Turles and mm. take it all in. But you would feel Westmead have huge experience in, in the squad and, and should be more prepared for a big, big game like it is. Albeit, I would be suggesting maybe we have a long look at the leagues uh, yeah. uh, in the next couple of months and see, can we come up with something that bit more balanced, Mike? Yeah, because I suppose what, what, what's looming then for them in two weeks, of course, is down get to play Kerry again in the Joe mm. McDonough but Westmead are hosting Kilkenny in the Leicester Championship. So the yeah. two of them, like this, this is kind of, as you said, this is Down's high point. But for Westmead, this is almost like this is the dress rehearsal. Yeah, that's it. Like, and and I mean, for Down, I suppose at the start of the year, maybe staying to a staying Joe McDonough. So they're overachieving already. Like, you know, um, mm. and it's 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 a freebie for them in loads of ways. They can have a cut off it and say next year they'll be in there in the same group as Antrim if we get the same format um, and they'll have a cut off their old rivals Antrim to stay mm-hmm. in that division next year at the very least um, so lot, you know a lot less pressure on them but I think Joe Fortune's an ambitious guy you know he wouldn't be going down there to make up the numbers and he'll want to get back to Division 1 hurling and um, I just think they'll have too much but uh, again like you have to be impressed with down you have to be impressed they've, yeah. they've done yeah, everything no, they've they been qualified a great story. directly yeah and uh, yeah no they have been great and as you say for, for Ulster hurling or any any look any of the counties outside of the the top eight or top ten to kind of be showing a resurgence, you know, because I grew up in the you know the eighties and nineties down where you know they weren't as good as Antrim but they were considered a you know yeah. something of a force and and beat, uh, and, and beat them in a good few uh, also mm. finals as well. My ground then I remember even in ninety five I and I particularly can remember ninety five because <laughs> we we played Galway and in the other semi final it was awfully and down you know so. Yeah. Um, and if I'm not mistaken, maybe two years later, it was Limerick and Down in the, or in the following mm. year, Limerick and Down before Wexford um, beat Galway yeah. in that semi final. I think I'm right on that, am I? Geez, yeah. we, we were stuck with the hard half of the draw there, Dale, on 95 and 96, weren't we? Yeah, yeah, yeah I know. <laughs> yeah, in fairness. Yeah, but it was it, it probably, no disrespect to the Down boys, it probably, with the four week break to the final, it maybe stood you better to have the tougher semi final. No. That's true. The, the Offaly boys can tell you about 89 as well, you know, where Indeed. they wound up giving a guard of honour to the Antrim <laughs> boys and they were out in their ears. So it's a dangerous game as well, obviously. It you, is. Need to be, you need to be fully tuned for it. But yeah, yeah, it's great. It's great. It's great that the football is on in Crow Park Sunday and the Hurland has 
you know, the, the field of legends all yeah. to itself on Saturday and it should be a fantastic occasion. Yeah, should be a good day of it, all right. Anthony, we should let you go and I'll get Pat's plan in here to talk about some football. Catch oh you God. again. Oh God. Listen, look at that, Mike. <laughs> Okay, we're back and right. Pat Spillane has joined us to look ahead to the football weekend. How are you doing, Pat? Very well, Mikey. Looking forward to a big weekend ahead. Four matches, four big finals. Lovely. Four big finals. We missed, and we missed them last year. Four, those four finals weren't. Mm. Well, three finals. One final was played last year. Three finals weren't played. So as somebody pointed out in some forum this week, I mean, this is the first league final. Even though Kerry have won two league titles, sharing one. This is the first league final they've been in in several years. Five years or something like that. So... Something was the last one, the, 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 last one the, uh, the one they lost to Mayo, actually, then, was it? I think it might have been, yeah. 2018, 2017, 2018. 2019, but the last one they won, I think, the last league final they won was maybe perhaps was a 16 or something like that. I'm not yeah, so then, yeah, they lost yeah. to Mayo. Yeah, they uh, lost to Mayo 19. Yeah, so old foes, uh, familiar foes, Pat. Um, I think we'll, I know the weather has taken a bit of a turn, but I think we can be safe that Croke Park won't be like Tralee was a few weeks ago. So we might get a, a, a better gauge of where these two teams are in comparison to each other rather than what was a match ruined by the weather below in Tralee. Well, see, the two big finals, the Division 1 and Division 2 final, there's two t- counties that have conundrums, and that's Galway and Mayo. Mm. Because Galway and Mayo will face off in three weeks' time in the Connacht Championship quarter final in McHale Park. So... You know, this week and probably most of next week, this would be Galway and Mayo's heavy training two weeks block of, and now they haven't got that. So, so while they will want both want to win their respective Division One and Division Two finals, they will also both have a half an eye on three weeks' time against Mayo, the Mayo Galway clash. So, so the two counties coming in really focused, really will come in as close to full strength and hell bent. Uh, on trying to win it will be Roscommon and Kerry because Roscommon don't play until I think it's the May Bank Holiday weekend. The winners of of Roscom- uh, the winners of Sligo and New York. Kerry don't play for five weeks again, wherever that venue will be, depending on tonight uh, mm-hmm. at the Munster Council. So so Kerry would Kerry need to lay down a marker. Kerry need to play full strength. Kerry need to be starting to look like the shaping into that championship team. And, and of course, as Jack alluded to, the one thing he has regretted over the last couple of weeks, they haven't been able to do, as Jack calls it, heavy metal training. So expect, you know, this this will be done and dusted and the heavy metal training will start over the next two weeks for Kerry. So look, uh, that day down in Tralee was a, like, there was people that commented on the game from watching it on television. And, and as we alluded to the last time, I think I was on the podcast, it was a cracking game of football played under atrocious weather conditions. Uh, and both teams will have learned. Kerry will learn. I mean, they were, they were beaten midfield. There's no doubt about that. Uh, and Kerry, Kerry fell over the line, probably slightly the better team. But I'd say the team that will take more learning from that game will be Mayo because Mayo were probably more under strength than Kerry. That's number one. They kicked nine wide and four in the vital stages, in, in the vital closing stages. And, you know, probably the failure of Mayo that night was the fact that, you know, the way the good, the Dublin in their prime would get to shoot around the, in the scoring position, they couldn't work their best forward right now into the scoring position. They ended up with the last kick of the game to Lee Keegan, 30 metres out on the right-hand side, trying to slice one over on the outside of the right. And so it's just poor game management and a bad finish. But but they will learn from that. They made a mistake, Mayo, that night. They put Oshin Mullen on David Clifford. And Oshin Mullen, that's the second year in a row they've made that mistake. Because last year, if you can remember, they put Oshin Mullen on Carl McShane. And Oshin Mullen is a possibly a good quarterback, but more an attacking halfback. He's not a man marker, but the big problem is the lack of physique. And he struggled in Tralee last night. That was number one. So it, don't expect Oshin Mullen to be picking up a David Clifford on this occasion. Expect Lee Keegan, I suppose. Uh, the positive for Mayo that night was their midfield. Uh, they dominated. Jordan Flynn and Matthew Ryan were quite superb. The negative of Mayo that day, and it was something from a Kerry tactical play, that Kerry stopped Mayo's runners coming from deep. They tracked the runners. They tagged the runners. And that attacking threat and that counter-attacking, attacking from deep, wasn't there that night. So it's. I remember that night being asked, who do I think will win? And I think, I think Kerry will fall over the line. I'm sort of beginning to think a little bit like that again. But, you know... You look at st- you look at statistics and you look at I mean 
the one county that probably have done well out of this Division One uh, campaign more than any other county is Mayo because one, they used they experimented with they gave lots of young players their chances. What was it? Uh, they used thirty four players in Division One. That's four more, uh, uh, three more than Dublin Amma. That was number one. They started thirty players in the various games. I mean, Kerry and Manon are next with twenty six. So they will have. It, they would have benefited a lot. They, they, there will be greater competition for places. They've introduced a lot of new young lads. Uh, and next Sunday, I suppose, is the day where they'll be getting close to sort of what's our best 15. Admittedly, they are they're hit with a lot of injuries. Diamond O'Connor, Brendan Harrison is now mm-hmm. injured. Killian O'Connor is missing. Uh, Tommy Conroy is obviously Owen gone. McLaughlin picked up Owen McLaughlin, possibly Paddy Durkin. Mm-hmm. So they're certainly down a lot of players. But all, honestly, uh, this is I, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, what what Pat says there at, at at the start, Rory, it, it is a it's always a, when it comes to the league final, there are there are factors outside of the league final. It's not a be all and end all final. Teams have a mind on what comes after, and the fact that Kerry don't have a championship match for eons, and you know Mayo are out against their 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 biggest rivals in in only a matter of three weeks, you can't not factor that into it, can you? Absolutely, no, hundred percent. I like the. I think Mick was making the point on the pod on Monday that it's a peculiar competition, the league, in that it starts off, everybody is going hammer and tongs and everybody has great ambitions to certainly maintain whatever status they have. <coughs> Excuse me. But by the time you get to the end of it, they're nearly running away from the cup. You know, <laughs> Teams are nearly running away because they don't want to be seen, you know, to over, any, any sense of over exuberance, any sense of celebration, yeah. anything that, you know, the opposition, which I think is all lo- like a load of a rubbish thought, to be honest. I think if it's a competition there to be won, you may as well go for it. I mean, how many league medals have you, Pat? And uh, have you, if you must have five, five or six at least, anyway? I'd Rory, say. honestly, Rory, honestly, mm-hmm. uh, I haven't a clue. <laughs> Genuinely, no, not being smart. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to check Pat's Balan's Wikipedia was the league, page. Was the, league, I, I, was the league a different competition back then? I mean, you had the pre, well, you had the pre-Christmas games. It might like it's it is a slightly more serious competition now. But I, what I find very peculiar about the league is this, and this kind of comes back to to a certain extent the narrative as well around the whole area of broadcasting. Everyone is great and they're all into the league when the league is on. But as soon as the league is over, no one really cares, you know? And it's, and I think that's a, just, I, I, I don't know whether it's because of the compact nature of the season or whether the fact that there's just a couple of weeks out from championship, you know, it's just a pity that the prize for winning it uh, seems to be something that the, the teams themselves turn their noses up at. One thing I would say, the monetary prize for winning it is quite significant from a county board perspective, and that shouldn't be forgotten here too, to a large extent, especially when you look at them having to pay for team holidays and the likes towards the back end of the year. So, Pat, on that note, you may have got your washing machines and all that, but I, you, you, maybe you didn't deserve them because you only won four leagues. Two no, I, four. Do you know what? I think Wikipedia <laughs> has... I think I... I I think it's put one more onto it. I think there was another year, but I'm not sure. But you're right. I mean... Uh, and you were a runner-up twice. All right. I haven't a clue. I, if you ask me, can I reminisce about the great league finals <laughs> I played in? Yeah. I haven't a clue. You know. and, and Rory is right. Uh, well, in those days, look, uh, if we had won the All-Ireland, there was three league matches probably before Christmas. Oh, geez, they were a continuation. They were sessions, I'd say. They were Pat, sessions. Were I mean, yeah. when we went particularly up north, Oh, the, the, the hospital. Uh, there was a lot of bad performances, you know. There was a lot. So, and then <laughs> on bad see, pitches. A, on bad pitches. And after Christmas, then, okay, you start to get your act together. But it was finished in April or whenever it was finished. And you had two to three months then for the real serious thing. But Rory is right. This year's league is intriguing me because every the key priority from everyone in Division One was to stay in Division One. And once they had achieved that priority, Rory is correct. Job, job done. Job done. As regards <laughs> trying to get silverware, ah, not really interested. So I mean, <laughs> it's and bizarre, it's not just it? it's not just this year. If you can remember, two years ago, uh, Kerry played Donegal down in Tralee. Donegal still had an outside chance, but Donegal had an eye on the championship. So Donegal sent down their B team, literally their B team, to play Kerry down in Tralee. Kerry beat Donegal league title uh, last year. If you can remember. 
it's Donegal again now that I come to think of it. I think Donegal played a semi-final against Dublin. And, and you know, they didn't, they weren't going hammer and togs again. So you look at this year, so, so you look at this year and you say, has it changed? No, it hasn't, because you look at, Mayo have been experimenting all through the league and they've got away with it. Uh, Armagh, hey, if, they, if, if Armagh were really serious of maybe having a slim chance of getting to the league final, you wouldn't be resting Reno O'Neill for the last game against Donegal or Grugan. No, you wouldn't. Uh, and the other thing about the league this year, OK, a lot of them, two things. Weather conditions have impacted on an awful lot of games and made them lotteries. That was number one. But if you were into gambling, are going by form. Oh, holy God. I mean, the inconsistent form by some counties was just mind-boggling. And, like, you look at Manon, and, look, we have to take it. We're all, I'm always wrong with Manon. We're, everyone is wrong with Manon because the minute you write them off, they, they bounce back. And you start to say, well, why do you keep writing them off? And you say, well, we give opinions, but we give opinions based on evidence. My evidence was I saw them playing against Kerry. It was the worst ever performance I saw a man and team give in Division 1. That was number one. Number two, I saw a man and playing down in Newbridge. They were hockey. They were opened up by the Kildare attack. They were desperate. And then they come along last Sunday. And from <laughs> after 10, 12 minutes, they were the best team and, bet- and deservedly beat, beat Dublin. So, oh, you throw your hat up at, at the inconsistent. May I have got in? Like, but let's, you know, if you want to look into the, like, Kerry... We'll take an awful lot of positives from this year's league in the mm-hmm. sense that up to last Sunday, which it didn't matter, everything was hunky-dory. Everything was hunky-dory. They were, they were blooding a lot of players. Clifford was on song. Uh, Shawnee Shea until his injury was on song. Their defence was absolutely brilliant. And even still, I mean, like people say, ah, oh, this Paddy Talley, he's the strike carry footballer. Look, look at the stats. They have the best defensive record carry in Division 1. They also have the best attacking record. So they've got the balance right. Uh, the only thing about it, you know, and Kerry, we do highs and we do lows. And like even though, lows. Uh, and we, even though last Sunday was irrelevant and it was one of those matches that, you know, they wanted to win and they didn't want to win and they didn't want to win and we're not really interested and, you know, it'll be the league final. But it was Tyrone and suddenly at some stage of the game they got sucked to series. But unfortunately, a couple of little things that, you know, you know, we haven't, when you keep winning games, you start to cancel out those negative thoughts and those, well, maybe there's a bit of weakness here or maybe there's a problem here. But you cancel them out because you say, ah, they're working hard, unbeaten, blah, blah, blah. Great, great, great. But then I was looking closely at the, the Tyrone match. And yes, it was, you know, it, it didn't mean anything to carry. But, but there was a few things. First of all, Tyrone played the game on their terms. They bossed the game pretty much from start to finish. But little failings showed in Kerry. One, there's the issue of a goalkeeper. Mm. Kerry need to settle on a goalkeeper. No doubt about it. Mm. Uh, Shane Murphy is regarded as the best shot stopper. Shane Ryan, more composed under the high ball. Shane Murphy considered the better kick out, but last Sunday had a bad day in, at Killarney. Uh, there's certainly an issue with our kick outs. Is that because there isn't a relationship or a strategy built up between the goalie and the defence? I'm not too sure. Is that because there's an absence of a ball winner at midfield? But the, the, the lack of a... He needs to settle on a goalie. The lack of a kick out strategy. Uh, I mean, against Monaghan, they lost 40%, or against Ahmad, second last round, they lost 40% of their kickouts. That is sacrilege in today's modern game. So, so there's an issue with settling on a goalie. There's an issue on a kickout strategy. We certainly have an issue midfield. We have two great athletes midfield that have played mainly during the, the league, Jack Barry and Diabod O'Connor. Joe O'Connor was introduced last week. A great athlete, powerful engine, powerful runner. But none of them are traditional ball winners, an out-and-out ball winner. And we need a ball winner. We're in trouble there midfield for to get a ball winner. And then up attack, and people say, "Ah, oh, well, our attack, we've loads of hours. And we have, but there is still an over reliance on David Clifford and Shawnee O'Shea when he returns to provide the bulk of the scores. And even without Shawnee last week, you, you felt oh, that attack isn't, isn't moving. And the last thing that worried me, and, and, and I remember I was cock a hoop after the Mayo game because I said, Kerry don't normally win close games. But what Kerry very rarely do is come from behind to win a close game. And just the last couple of minutes last Sunday in Killarney, there was a bit of a groundhog day feel because they had possession. And it reminded me, 2019 final, maybe the, the, the drawn match against Cork and Pocky Keefe. 
they were playing the ball over and back. There was no penetration. Uh, there was turning over by David Clifford. There was a foul hand pass by Ty Morley. And you know what the big thing is? There was no one showing leadership, taking responsibility, turning and having a go. So those little things uh, worry me, but uh, are carrying a good uh, career favour. So they all are, ah, I, I don't gamble. I don't bet. They shouldn't be. Uh, I, they're very short favourites as well, I'm afraid. I, not yet, not yet. Yeah. I'm, maybe I'll tell you more after next Sunday. Rory, isn't it a relief that we have a national final with Kerry in it? And Pat mm. has just spelled out in detail all the things that are wrong with Kerry. It's, well, I, well, I think he actually, makes. A, I think I think I do think I do think he's uh, Pat has summed it up very well there. I think like there there were some other issues which was down the middle of their defence, which I think they've solved really. I think Jason Foley has been a massive. He's been, yeah. he's been outstanding at fullback. He's arguably been. The, the farm full back in the country himself and maybe Brian Stack out of Roscommon. Um, centre back, I think Tyg Morley has done really well in locking that position down. He's sitting a little yeah. bit deeper, fair enough. Um, and look up front, I think they have the forwards, they have plenty of pace. I think a, par- a proper partner for Dermot O'Connor is yet to be found. Whether or not David Moran is going to provide that solution, we don't know. I think that's an area where. Mayo will go after again yeah. on Sunday and like the big question mark from a Mayo perspective is you know look I, we mentioned injuries my understanding is Rob Henley is injured as well or yes he is yeah you know and that's it that's like look you again you could probably argue has been the farm goalkeeper of the league certainly up until he got injured he was outstanding as we know against Dublin yes. and he ended up getting man of the match that night so if he's fit and as Pat said, if, the, if they can establish a dominance around the middle of the field with Jordan Flynn and Matthew Ruan, who I think are probably the best midfield pairing that are out there now at the minute, I think, you know, look, we're in for a really good contest. It might be a slightly more old-fashioned two teams just putting, putting the foot down and going for it because um, they don't really know how to play each other. You know, you, like just in, in that sort of hackneyed old phrase in terms of boxing and where styles make fights, there's just something when Kerry Mayo meet well, there's something when everybody meets Mayo where it just becomes um, just a really, really open right. end, yeah. a really open end-to-end game. And I'd expect more of the same on Sunday. I think it'll be a cracking contest. Very hard to call. But yeah. Mikey, the big difference to see, the big difference between us and Stack Park, the last league match uh, that they played at Crow Park is one, one ground conditions. Yeah. Top of the ground. And Crow Park, Crow Park, Kerry, Kerry are a Crow Park team. They like the vast expanse. And Mayo so are. Uh, well, Mayo as well, but Kerry don't like Tralee, uh, you know, even though their record is quite good. But it's a tight pitch. Those conditions didn't. Kerry, are, Kerry, are, Kerry played their best football in a big, wide, open field, dry ball, firm side, top of the ground. But actually, you know, it's it's in, look. I, I'm giving, trying to give a, 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 an analysis a where Kerry are. I mean, and there's a danger, like I said, where we get you get a bit carried away when there's unbeaten runs and you sort of. Like I said, hide read the too much into a defeat. You read too much. I know. I was looking at media comment after I did. I did um, an analysis on Kerry's defensive play against uh, in in the match against was it Mayo? No, it wasn't. A, forget who it was. Any, it was the last night I was on League Sunday, and I was talking about their defensive play and how brilliant their defensive play and what was different about Kerry's defensive play now about blocking the diamond, forward striking back, you know, a swarm defence, a huge turnover account, their work rate, and did and like people were saying, ah, oh, yeah, there he is now. He says, look, he's ah, oh, there he is. He's a he's once upon a time he was anti puke football. This was all wrong, and now there he is. He's advocating. This is what Kerry are doing, so it's good. Look. Let's be clear. Let's be clear. Look, I don't like the way modern Gaelic football has become. I don't like this possession base. I don't like 15 players behind it. But if I've got, gone to spend every night of the year talking about, I hate this type of football, that's a load of rubbish. Yeah, you, yeah. you, you analyse what's in front of you. And you're analysing why did... I'm not saying... I'm not, I, I'd love to say this, this style of football. I don't like, I don't like, I don't like. Mm. And a lot of people don't like it, but some people do like it. But I'm there to analyse why did Kerry win? Why did Kerry lose? Why why did why they were winning all their matches? Why they were unbeaten in the first six matches of the league was defensive play was absolutely brilliant. That's exactly it. So, so nothing about. But you know, let's go down. I don't, I'm always intrigued. And like I said, ah, oh, the easiest thing in the world is Mayo forwards. No, gee, I'll get like you'll never. And, and you know, you look at statistics, <laughs> and and and, and do you know the way there are lies, damn lies, and statistics. And it looks like that after next Sunday. The highest scorer in the in the division one will probably be Rhino. I don't know. 
because he's just one point behind Dean Rock and he's second. It'd probably be Ryan O'Donoghue. Now, David Clifford is uh, a little bit behind. David Clifford is seven points behind. So the possibility that Ryan O'Donoghue will be a top scorer, that's absolutely brilliant. So, right, that's Mayo's forwards. That's good. He, they have a top-class marquee forward, and he has been very good. Then you say Mayo's forwards again, and I have another positive, that along with Tyrone, they had more people, more players on the score, got on the score sheet during the Division One leg campaign. Nineteen players. Patrick O'Hara, the last day, was the nineteenth Mayo player to score for Mayo in this year's Division One. So look, whoa, top class marquee forward, top scorer in the country, wide range of scorers. And then you start to say, you look at statistics. Then you say, all oh, right, well, let's look at a few things. And then we looked at their game against Kerry. The starting six forwards scored four points from play. Their game against Tyrone. Their starting six forwards scored one point from play. And then you look at Ryan O'Donoghue and say, geez, he's brilliant. But then you look at 35% of Mayo scores, one third of Mayo scores come from Ryan O'Donoghue. So while I could give a big argument how good Mayo scores, I could give you as many statistics about their shortcomings. So <laughs> that's the beauty of analysis. That's the beauty of statistics. And, you know, people would say, ah, the real statistics and scoring should be free, include freeze and all. To a point, yes, I can see where they're coming from because statistically, if you score more than the opposition, irrespective of where the scores come from, they're, that's their scores. But any forward worth his salt, I just think that any forward in an intercounty, that the least you should demand from any forward in top class matches is a minimum two points from play. And when you think of, say, Ryan O'Donoghue, and he's going to be probably the highest scorer in the country, do you know what's Ryan O'Donoghue's average uh, in games so far? A uh, point or two, it's a... it's uh, from play. It's about two pints from play mm. per game. You know, against Kerry, the gas bath about it was he was he was Mayo's best forward against Kerry. He got no point from play. Yeah. So ah, I, I am I'm one of those people who so I, I almost kind of discount. I look at the top score. I, I look at someone's like scoring tally. I almost discount freeze. I know that's stupid. I, do too, I know it's a I huge do. skill, Rory. Yeah, I don't know how you it. feel about it, but I look at yeah. David Clifford and it's four seventeen from play, and I say. That's unbelievable. That's magnificent. I, I, I think, I think. look, again, not as Pat mentioned, you don't want to be, oh, back in my day and like, or back in, yeah. back in years gone by. I think there was an art form to the old fashion free. I mean, Pat, you obviously played against him. I thought Larry Tompkins was just one of these incredible free takers from distance and certainly the ones from the ground. I, you know, like any, yeah, it, I think, you know, a 45 from out from a fair distance. I remember Brian Sheehan, you know, some of the, and, and even Rory Began now, and, and we saw what Niall Morgan obviously did last year in the All-Ireland semi-final against Kerry, where just on the stroke of half time, did he put one over from the halfway line? Yes. It okay. was close. It was close enough to it. So yep. there can be a spectacular free and an incredible skill in that. So I, I wouldn't undervalue or underplay it. Um, but at the same time, look, I think Pat is 100% correct. Like the real true value of your forwards has to be what they can contribute from play because like that, that, that spells danger. That's, mm. that's what gives you that bit more cut and thrust. If you're depending on the referee's whistle to, you know, put your, put, to keep the scoreboard ticking, that's not going to get you very far. In a word, lads, who's going to win it? I fancy, I do fancy, look, I said it to you at the start, I didn't think Kerry would be beaten all year. That prediction's gone out the window, so there you go. That shows how much I know. I think last weekend, though, was a little bit of an anomaly. I think they hadn't much to play for, whereas Tyrone did. Um, I just think they, Kerry are, it's time for Kerry, and I think Jack O'Connor's going for a hat-trick, <clears throat> uh, in his own hat-trick in terms yeah. of league, league titles won in his first year in charge. This is Jack, Jack O'Connor, Mark three. And I um, might expect Kerry to get over the line in another tight game. Pat? Yeah, I think I'd agree with Rory. I think uh, there's no doubt about it. The injury concerns that Mayo have are going to be, you know, they will not be at full strength. Kerry will be pretty much close to full strength. Not too sure about Shawnee or Shea, David Morton. Like I said, finding out some information from the Kerry camp, you would be better off getting the, finding out the third secret of Fatima. But that's neither here nor there. Actually, I met one of the Kerry players last week, you know, and like I asked them a simple question. I can't remember, but it was like something like, what day is today? <laughs> and, <laughs> and you he jumped know, out the window. <laughs> and you know, they're looking at you and he's wondering, why does he want to know this now? <laughs> so, like, yeah. and, and there's about a 30 second pause before, before he answers the question. So, look at fairness, I don't even bother ask, even asking him how is he <laughs> feeling you know, in, case, in case he's giving away. Look, I, I think uh, uh, you're right. Jack's record 
uh, league and championship double every every uh, he's won the league and championship double three times. Uh, uh, Jack will be hurting after last week. He'll be cross. I don't know the way Jack feels. Uh, defeat even if it, in an irrelevant game. He'll be cross. He'll be cross with a lot of things that happened last week. Uh, so Kerry close to full strength. Crow Park factor, the wide open spaces, uh, the fact that they have, they'll be more focused, five weeks to break at the clock. This will be, uh, I think, Kerry to fall over the line. It'll be a cracking game. I it'll think be so, a, yeah. It'll be a shootout. And, but the only thing is, I'm certain is, there'll be no uh, bonfires blazing in Kerry, win or lose, uh, Sunday yeah. night or Monday. There will be no celebrations because in Kerry, this is their second, this is, they're going for their third league title, Division One league title in a row, albeit they shared last year. It counts for absolutely sweet F all if they don't <laughs> deliver Sam in the end of July. No pressure. Uh, well, I, I, I just don't think it counts much for anyone. Like, we, we've spent no. a lot of the spring bemoaning like the, the devaluing of the hurling league uh, against the football league. But the thing about the football league, as you, as you both said, it's all pivoted towards survival and once survival is obtained yeah. or, or promotion from four, three or two, and once that's obtained, it loses all meaning. Whereas like, the like, hurling league yeah. is about very little until you get to the semifinals and finals. And now you've Cork and Waterford who both desperately want to win this match. Whereas you have Kerry and Mayo and we're questioning how yeah. much they care. It's funny how the leagues yes. flip. Like if and, you look at, if you look at, um, if you look at uh, Limerick from last weekend, for instance, the celebrations below on the Gaelic grounds when they secure promotion, if they beat Loud on yeah. Saturday, Saturday, right? I guarantee you, you won't see celebrations like what the way they celebrate. Like they'll have won a national cup, they'll have won medals that I would imagine, you know, not too many Limerick footballers will have national medals, and I think they're significant in a player's career, regardless of what. Are level. they? Is a Division Three? League medal significant. Well, I'd kind of scrap the league finals. It is if you're a Limerick. It is if you're a four, Limerick, three and two myself. But it is if you're a Limerick footballer. I mean, like if you look at it like this, Mikey, right? You look at some of the big traditional counties. When I say traditional, let's just say take Cork. There's a whole batch of Cork players, and you know what they've won at the current. We'll say over the course, over the last ten years, right? rack up nothing. No, not, not no, even a McGrath Cup, Jesus. They no, like they don't have a Munster Championship, a league title, nothing to show for all of that effort, all of that training. So while... You'll have to you organise a blitz. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll, we'll, organize a, we'll organise a seven aside here. It would be good crack. But um, no, like, I mean, so I do think it's, it's, it's a significant thing for certainly for players down that level, down in the lower levels. To have something at the end of yeah. their career to say, you know, look, I won something anyway. Okay, but yeah. then, Pat, how about you do away with the league finals and whoever finishes yeah. top of the league is the I league think champion? I that wouldn't be a bad idea. I, I yeah. think I would agree with both of you there, yeah. A league, a league is a league. Uh, first yeah. past the post, whoever's top of the table, champions. I, yeah. I think, as you can see from next week, with a, with the likes of the Galways and with the likes of the uh, Mayos, with, um, with, with such a huge championship game. And, you know, people haven't got their focus on how important this championship game is. But, you know, like the losers of Galway and Mayo in three weeks' time could have a qualifier against the losers of Johnny Gall or Armagh. Um, yeah. It is a huge match. But I remember 90, I got my first league medal and you say, ah, oh, geez, uh, like how big was it? 1974, I won my first league medal since so the first year I was playing with Kerry. Uh, and I know how I got the medal. Uh, a fellow was in the bar one day. He said, is Pat there? He says, I met so-and-so in Kilmere, PJ McIntyre. He was at the county board meeting last night and they gave you this medal. Will you, will you ha if you're going out to Spillane's bar tonight, will you hand it to Pat? So a, a customer in the bar who got it from another fellow in, in Kilmere hand me, handed me the National League medal over the counter and I put it into my pocket and I went up to the kitchen. And that was it. There was no, there was no, there was no fanfare, there was no blowing a trumpet or whatever. But you're right, first past the post league. But I, I wouldn't. Like, I, I wouldn't, I suppose, like, you looked at the euphoria celebrations of and the happiness on the faces of, of the loud players, the Limerick players. Ah, mm. it's just, you know, it means a lot. It, it, it does mean a lot to them. Or you look at, in the other words, I mean, there was a, a fabulous photograph in the papers on Monday morning, Anton Sullivan, surrounded by his family, you know, hands in his, uh, hands in, his face, you know, in tears after Offaly's you know, defeat. It means a lot. It means a lot, particularly in lower divisions. I think in Division 1, the championship is the king. And once, like Rory says, once they secure status in Division 1, well, sure, after that. 
Yeah. So look, we 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 we've downplayed the finals, and um, that's no disrespect to teams because promotion is a fantastic like promotion is a reward. Don't tell me Cavan and Tipperary are that bothered with the cup this weekend. They've got out of Division Four. That was their aim. But I, I guess the it, it's just a quick mention of the Galway Ross Common game because I suppose you could make the argument, Pat, that they're on the opposite sides of the conic draw. So having a proper hit out against each other would be no harm. Maybe Galway are thinking not with Mayo in three weeks. Right? <laughs> well, see, that's it. I mean, that's the point I'm trying to make about Mayo as well. I mean, hmm. will Galway be focused on Mayo? Will they be going... Will they go risk home? Damien Comer or Shane Walsh? And Shane Walsh. This is, I mean, bear in mind, they didn't risk Shane Walsh in the last... Well, obviously, they played a second team last Sunday, but against in their vital game against, against Derry, they didn't risk Shane Walsh. So I, I think, you know... All their eggs are in, in, in the one basket, I think, in championship. They've secured promotion to Division 1. That was a primary, uh, I think, ir- ir- irrelevant of what, whether they win the trophy or not. I, I will say two things. Though. First of all, up to the last round, I mean, Galway have played some superb football in this year's, uh, in this year's league. And their, their demolition of Derry in the first half up in Owen Beg was, 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 was phenomenal. devastating. Phenomenal. It was, you know, this was a team who had the advantage of the wind and said, right, we're going for the juggler. They pressed up on Derry's kick out and they absolutely blitzed them in the first half. Uh, and there's no doubt about it. They have serious talent and the, uh, under Ke- with Keane O'Neill on board, defensively, okay, there was a couple of mishaps against Cork and, and off him. But the last match against Clare, I saw, I think against Clare, after those two bad defensive performances against Clare they conceded 1-5 a goal in the first couple of minutes and five points for the rest of the game uh, and they've got a bit solid uh, Sean Kelly is turning into one of the stars of this of the, of, of Gaelic football in this country he's a class act Matthew Tierney is developing um, Shane Walsh if he's back to full fitness again obviously is devastating but you have to sp- a special word for us coming because they are the yo-yo team. They go up and they go down. But what Anthony Cunningham, that bunch of players are achieving in us coming is absolutely fantastic. And bear in mind, they are the only team in this year's league that are unbeaten. Yeah. And, and there was something I like. I like the, the Smiths and the Murders and Connor Cox. They're serious talent. They're really, you know, they're really good players. Uh, but I, I thought last Sunday, you know, uh, Carl, was it, what is this? Carl Sweeney got a black card for, for, for Galway. And a lot of teams, when, when the opposition get a black card, well, they're sort of floosting about and they're still keeping possession. But when Galway got the black card and Russ Common had the advantage of an extra man, they went for the juggler over the next 10 minutes and they outscored Galway, one six to no score. Look, Cunningham is, is shooed by uh, he good coach, good manager. He's done brilliant work with that Russ Common team. Do you know, it'll be... Well, it, it, it won't be... I, the only thing I'll be certain is it won't be as bad as the first half they played the last year's championship, which was the worst 35 oh, God, minutes yeah, in the entire that. championship season. Weather, weather conditions are right were poor. Yeah. But uh, mm-hmm. I'm looking forward to it because it's a sort of clash of different types of styles. Yeah. And whatever very, like very, very much Pat spot on. I think it's a real clash of styles. I think it's a clash of a very free flow and forward unit. I mean, if you look at the yeah. scores, Galway racking up 322, oh. 411, 217, yeah. you know, yeah. like big, big scores. The 1499 scored. Like, you know, massive scores, but then on conversely, and, and here's, that, a, here's the other converse, stat, for plus 41, plus yeah. 41, they have yeah. the best scoring average yeah. Yeah. scoring yeah. in the country. But then conversely to that, you're looking at one of the meanest defences around. I don't know, have Roscommon conceded a goal yet? Have they conceded one or two goals, maybe tops? I don't know. But you're looking at a very, very... Um, tight back six there from a Roscommon perspective the one thing I'd say is there's two caveats Cork Park usually lends itself to the team that has the more attacking threat so on that basis you probably favour Galway the flip yeah. side of it is the flip side of it is I think that um, I think that Galway really now have to start zoning in as Pat mentioned earlier on Mayo in um, in just over three weeks time and I think that that could play a significant factor yeah. in their preparation this week on the just fi- final point for me on, on the sorry the, Rory the... Meat and Galway scored goals against Roscommon yeah. two goals thank you Mr Google yeah two goals they've conceded yeah. um, the spread of scores in Roscommon is impressive they're top four scores and I'm going I'm to leave out freeze here uh Connor Cox is 14, Donnie Smith is 111, Enda Smith has 28, and Keen McKe- Keen McKeown has 19. So, so there's that, that's a that, really that's, impressive forward that, line. That's an impressive stat. I mean, when you look at the top, when you look at uh, when you look at uh, Dean Rock has 37% of Dublin scores, Jimmy Highland 36% of Kildare scores, Ryan O'Donnell 35%, Paddy McGrady 32% of of Donegal scores, Darren McCartan uh, almost 30% of Tyrone scores. That's an impressive stat. 
that all mm. round list of scores. Yeah. That is very impressive. Jesus, Pat brought his stats sheets today, didn't he? Um, <laughs> Rory, did you en- did you enjoy TG Cahir's coverage of the last day of the league? <laughs> uh, I did. I did. I, like, like, look, look. If you just wouldn't, I suppose, if you wouldn't mind indulging me here for a few minutes, right? And I just think, like, just one final I'm thing. Teeing you up as best I can. Yeah, yeah. Just one final <laughs> thing that needs to be said. I just what a fine job TG Cahir did last weekend, and like they always do. Look, there's nobody watches as much TG Cahir as probably I do, and I know, I actually, know a lot of people working there, and they're all great TV people. Great no Cameron Killarney, though, Rory. No Cameron Killarney. Upset yeah, well, we had a mini OB down there, <laughs> you know, but um, no, 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 giving credit where it is due means, like, as usual, it couldn't just be left at that. And I fully accept RT is a bit like the government, it's seen as the establishment, it's, it's a convenient punch bag, and that's fine. There's just a few things to be pointed out, and I think just to sort of, you know, stem the tide here a little. RT's GA calendar footprint now stretches across the entire year from January right through to December. This includes, since pre-COVID, 10 weeks of club championship action, initially four weeks of live league inter-county action, which has now been doubled as of this year to eight weeks at live inter-county action, which is all we're allowed show, by the way, because that's rights dependent. That then is supplemented by a weekly highlight show, which ran for the full 10 weeks. And that, by the way, is before you even begin to talk about the Sunday game, the Sunday game live, the unbelievable bounce around job that radio does on a Saturday and a Sunday, what our news department does pretty much every night of the week. And of course, what we offer here on the pod and, and online, not to mind Camogie, Ladies Football, the All-Stars, International Rules Congress. And by the way, just, just as an, another aside, we've been doing simultaneous live games since the introduction of the round rabbit and hurling back in 2018 on two bloody channels, dipping across one to the other. Like, you know, TV wasn't invented last weekend as great a job as TG Carr did. It was a fabulous job. Right. But also people need to remember Mikey that RT is not a dedicated sports channel, especially when they start throwing loose language, like license fee value around. And I've listened to some absolute garbage over the last two or three days. And I mean, no, Real verbal diarrhea. On one platform, it was mentioned that we should look at doing a Netflix series on the league a la Drive to Survive, right? Now, here's a quick story. A high-profile county, which will remain nameless, who reached a number of All-Ireland finals over the last 10 years, had their press night on a couple of occasions now, not just once. And at the press night, despite requests for player X and Y, the player that's put forward is a guaranteed sub. I mean... 100%, 100%, no chance whatsoever of playing. You can name him, Rory, it's Mayo. No, it, no, it, right. <laughs> okay. no chance of playing. No chance of playing. And I had to, I had to explain to the, uh, the PRO, you do realise there's only a million people watching here and they're going to be potentially listening to somebody who's going to be talking about a match that he's not going to be playing in. Well, that's who management is putting forward. So I folded the camera and left, right? Now, I accept that. That's the game we're in. There's no contracts here. This is amateur. It's all amateur. And the management was within their rights. Whether you agree or disagree, they were entitled to do that because they're not signing any paper to say they have to provide anybody. And people talk about Netflix series. I mean, Jesus. Then I was sent another screen. You can get Pat to ask them what day the week Wait, here it is. Wait, here it is. I sent another screen grabbing clip from another platform where we hear about the potential opportunity missed, where the wonderful Leinster Football Championship might get squeezed on May 1st. And like because of the condensed calendar, by the way, which has come about because of this daft split season. And then in the very next conversation, the very next one, no hint of irony lost on these people, by the way. The first question is, why is Leinster Football gone to pot? (laughs) I mean, (laughs) like you couldn't actually make this up. I don't even know if these people listen back to themselves. Look, we have to live in the real world when you're making television shows of health and safety, scaffold bills, gantry bills. Like people really, and, and then people talk about rights and rights on this and rights on that. Like, I mean, just people really don't have a clue half the time what they're talking about. And one final point. The league is great when it's on. Everyone is into the league, but when it's over, no one cares. Who won the league last year? I'll tell you, no one cares. And that's all I have to say. Sorry. <laughs> Pat, that was, that was a monologue worthy of you. 
I think for a change, Rory is going to get all the flack after this week's podcast. I'm I probably will. So, 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 yeah. so to cover the bases, by the way, seeing as just before the critics go, just to, again, can I mention the Division 4 and the Division 3 finals in case we've been accused? Uh, Division 3 final, what Billy Lee has done with Limerick, unbelievable. What, what Mickey Hart has done in lifting football and the profile of football in Loud, absolutely fantastic. Uh, I mean, Loud got beaten in the first round of the league by Leash, and you'd say to say, ah, oh, they'll be relegated. Leash are relegated. Limerick, I lost a lot of key players during the league, and you don't know, down through the years, it's well documented that a lot of players didn't want to play football with Lee. But Limerick are with Limerick. But what Limerick are doing, Limerick are setting a template in Gaelic football that every other weaker so-called weaker county in Gaelic football could do. They're, they're putting huge resources, huge personnel into the coaching of Gaelic football underage up through the development squads with mm. Paul Kinner, the curling coach. As, as So they're reaping the reward and they will because it's all about setting a foundation. And I know Mickey Hart is doing well. So that's a cracking game. Really looking forward to it. Possibly fancy Limerick because they have, I think, Billy has got that sort of player that, that's required for Gaelic football, that big, strong, athletic guy, and probably Limerick to share that. And yeah, I think that match there, there around Robin game was a game played on the plastic pitch, if I was, remember correctly. In, in, and in I UL. think that was, one day, in, that was one day let slip, I think. So it I, was, yeah. yeah. I, I'd expect Limerick maybe yeah. to try and write that wrong. And, and then the Division 4 final point. is the final that I'm sure everyone knew was going to happen anyway, in the sense yeah. that uh, the, the, there were the two best teams in it in the since that these are two teams who only two years previous were in the all semi semi-finals. So, uh, although in fairness, they, they, they stumbled over the line. Tipperary got beat, drew with Watford in the first round, got well beaten by Leitrim and, OK, got their act together. Uh, Kevin, I watched Kevin play once or twice and, and they stumbled over the line. Uh, they were lucky to beat uh, Sligo when they, Sligo had a man sent off just after, just to start the second half. Uh, Tipperary beat them above in the league, which was a big shock. I think mm. Kevin to get re- I think Kevin to get revenge. So I fancy Kevin and Limerick. Uh, and I'll tell you this: I'm sure there will be good celebrations because you know what I remember when you talk about celebrations and people don't give it them. Uh, uh, just one little thing on a personal note: I always remember when I got my cruciate knee, knee injury and I was told I'd never again play football. Uh, and one of the things I always said to myself: what I re- what was my regret? Thinking my career is over. And the biggest regret I had was that that I never celebrated victories or success. That was my biggest regret. That I said, geez, you know, I took them for granted. And, and success, whether it is a Division 4 title, whether it is Jesus, promotion Jesus from Division Pat, in that Kerry, In that Kerry team, you must have been the only one. <laughs> I, know what that, I know. And you know what? I vowed if I ever came back again that I'd, I'd enjoy success. I'd celebrate mm-hmm. success. I'd celebrate victory. I'd, I'd savour victory. And you know, that's what promotion in the league should be for all those counties. That's for winning a uh, Division Two, II, Division One, II, Division Three, II, Division Four title. Uh, medals and honours aren't handed out to everyone. And there isn't one for everyone in the audience. It's the chosen few. So, yes, we can slag off the league and people don't get interested. But, lads, it's a national title. It's a medal. Okay. Enjoy it. <clears throat> that was Embrace a... it. Embrace it. Yes, look, that was our, our final league uh, podcast of the day, and I thought it was very eventful. Just, just a note on, on on what Rory said, where he says uh, people don't don't have a clue. I would say that extends from the general public too. Uh, people in RTE, Rory, because I remember when I came in, I had this great idea for a soccer Saturday style, like kind of live online show. You know, kind of to, as the results come in, yada yada, reporters at the grounds. And when I started to think about it practically, uh, it was explained to me by people like yourself and people with knowledge, just exactly how much it would cost and how many people you would actually need to do it for a an online platform. Uh, it was just made no sense. Yeah, so uh, yeah, and people... uh, yeah, you have to remember as well, TG Car are only a television station. They, they don't have responsibilities to radio or online or like, I mean, like they like. So, you know, whatever budgets they're getting and they use it really well. I mean, they deserve massive credit, and massive kudos, but just people just really don't understand. They don't understand. Like I heard another conversation about rights. OK, and people were saying, like, why can't they spread the rights around? But OK, so we, let's say we're paying. Let's say we're paying. Let's make an arbitrary figure, 100 euros for the rights for the championship. But then. To, to show a match on a simultaneous channel, which is going to go directly up against us, which is going to be, let's say we're showing Cork and Kerry on one channel and Satanta or TV3 or Virgin or whoever decide and the GA sell them 
the rights to the secondary game, which is going to go directly up against us. Well, why are we paying 100 euros so for the rights to show this game when you have direct comp competitor showing another version of the same ilk and pulling the same audience away from us? So straight away, your value on your rights drop. Like, <laughs> you know, like, like people don't understand. They just really don't understand it. And I think sometimes we're not very good at articulating the complexities around this in a way that would probably help people in a better way to understand. And there are, look, there are commercial sensitivities too, and I understand all of that. Uh, you've explained same... it all very well, Roy. People still won't care. They won't care. You, you have explained care. it very well. Um, Lad, was... Lads, you've, you've both done an excellent job in explaining your position. Then. And I can see I can see promotion beckoning in, in the organisation. <laughs> I'm, well I'm, well I'm not looking for a promotion. That's only more stress. Uh, now, Pat, you're just winding yourself. Go away now and polish your National League level, level medal, <laughs> why don't think... you? I wonder where <laughs> I'm there. I'm going looking for them. Yeah, good luck. We'll uh, catch you all next week. And of course, you can keep across uh, all the matches on uh, Saturday and Sunday Sport on Radio 1 uh, or on the RT website and news app. And you can watch them on TG Cahar where they'll do a bloody fine job of covering them. All right. Thank you, Rory. Thank you, Pat. And thank you to Dalo earlier. We'll see you all again next week. Good luck. Good luck. earned it by winning the last two matches on the road and that's not going to be taken away from us but what I love in Hurling I love players that will never give in he hits it he hits it it's over the bar oh holy Moses